I can already hear you typing away on the keyboard. How, how dare you, you son of a, you, that's my biggest hobby. I love retro game collecting. I'm a retro game collector. You're calling me stupid. I'm not calling you stupid. Far from it. I recently just bought two retro video games. I bought D and Road Rash for the Saturn off of Whatnot. Whatnot is a website where you sign up. Of course, I'm going to plug this because you know, it allows me to buy some games sometimes. It's a website where you sign up. It's live auctions, blah, blah, blah. You get $10 using my link in the description box down below. If you spend that $10, I get $10. So sometimes I accumulate money and I can buy cool stuff like this. I'm not talking about buying retro video games being stupid. I'm talking about retro game collecting the hobby. The entire hobby and what what this has become over the past 10 years because it's amazing i keep hearing this is gonna be a retro gaming crash and nobody's gonna want this stuff and everything's gonna be cheap again bull bull because that hasn't happened yet okay i've been around this hobby for a very long time okay i pretty much got in on the ground roots the grassroots of it and i just i don't even know where i'm going with this video i don't know if it's just going to be me talking to you in this whole thing or there's going to be video overlays i don't know but i want to get this off my chest because it's something that's been bothering me because like i said i've been there with this whole retro game collecting stuff since like day one since back in the day in the early 2000s or the late 90s when you would just walk into a pawn shop and there'd be rows and rows of old video games that nobody wanted Nobody wanted these games. You'd go there to buy and play these games from your childhood or maybe learn about games that you didn't know about. There was this one place. It was called Cash Converters. It was like the greatest place on earth. You wanted rims. You wanted car speakers. I would go in there and buy a subwoofer and like 10 NES and Genesis games for like nothing, for like dirt cheap because nobody wanted these things. There, there, was, there was no, it was all about just playing the games. You couldn't buy something like an EverDrive or something like that or have all these games get re-released and stuff like that. You had Nesticle on your computer with an emulator and you could play it there, but you couldn't play it, you know, sitting on your couch or you're playing on the actual hardware with an actual controller. You had emulators on your computer, but then... Somewhere along the way, this became a, a, a bigger thing. And I get that. I, I understand that. You know, things change. People get nostalgia for things and they want to buy things. Okay. You know what? That, that's fine. That's reasonable. But what retro game collecting has become in 2022 is stupid. It's disgusting. It's bullshit. And I'm just going to talk about it because I don't care. If you get offended by this, maybe you're guilty of these things. First off, Let's talk about how we got to this situation. What, what caused this situation to arise? And so many people are quick to point out YouTubers. I remember making a video on this channel five or six years ago where the whole mentality was the reason that these video games are so expensive is because of people making hidden gems videos or people doing game hunting videos and blah, blah, blah. And that was like the whole general consensus. People would blame like James Rolfe and you know angry video game nerd and game chasers and all these channels that were doing that at the time and it's like that's stupid because all they're doing is bringing awareness to something maybe awareness to a game it's not like they're always finding these these huge heavy hitter games but people used to blame them and now this is gonna piss some people off i don't care get your money let's get that straight get your money okay this is just my opinion on what is i'm friends with some of these people it's not a big deal it's more about the mentality and how the mentality has changed because nowadays you have these literal channels on on youtube that are retro gamers and retro flippers essentially they they buy things for low prices they show you selling them for a high price and like Nobody seems to think that that's like affecting things. Nobody seems to think that that's potentially impacting things. This used to this this, this is the community community because I think gaming community the, the game the retro gaming community that's the biggest load of bullshit in the world. Just stop that nonsense. These are the same people that used to you got a five dollar super chat donation you e begging son of a bitch you piece of shit. But then these channels come along and they're literally buying things for cheap from people who don't know any better and flipping them for huge profits and nobody cares. Once again, get your money. I'm friends with some of these people. That's awesome. I'm glad you're able to do that. You are putting in time and effort into finding these collections and finding these items. I, I respect it, but let's be real. It's, it's just amazing to me how the mentality of these same people has changed throughout the years. But I, I don't blame the whole resellers that you see on YouTube. I don't blame them. I think that's silly because they're simply just making a buck. They're taking advantage of a system that's been incorporated throughout years of how this structurally has happened. 
I don't really know where I was going with that. But anyways, that, that's, they're not they're not the ones to blame. They're not the big ones to blame. It, does it play a role? Maybe. But at the end of the day, the, the reason that we've gotten to this position is because of things like cell phones. Okay? You don't understand how big of a role cell phones play into this. Because everyone has a smartphone nowadays. So everyone thinks they have liquid gold because they've seen an article on something. They've seen this, that, or the other. So everyone thinks they have something that's worth a stupid amount of money. You could go into a video game store, and I will call out video game stores that do this. I don't give a shit. You could go to a video game store where, okay, this game is sitting on the shelf with no price tag, and you're like, well, how much is this game? And you'll see some jackass take out his cell phone and be like, oh, let me look it up. And like, go to see like what the game has sold for recently. What? Like, once again, get your money. I'm not hating on that, but it, it it's it's ruining things. It's making things worse by, by doing that because you don't know why that copy sold for that much money. You don't know if there was some sort of other thing going on with that. You're just basing it on this, this craziness. And you have all these, these stores that are dedicated to retro video games. You have conventions that are dedicated to retro video games. It, it's crazy. It's fucking insane what this has become because it started out as something that just people... You know, younger people wanting to play their video games that they played from their childhood that they threw away or they sold to someone else when they were a kid or traded with a kid. And now it's just become this huge capitalistic thing. And you know what? That's okay. That's okay. It's kind of stupid, but that's okay because they're not the reasons for this, for this situation, in my opinion. You know, does this all sort of amass together? I mean, to some degree, you know, it doesn't help the situation. But once again, you're a store owner. You've made the store. You just put prices on your shit. Put prices on your stuff. If you want to change your prices based on what the market is doing, you can. More than welcome to. But don't make someone bring up a, a copy of a game and you pull out your cell phone. Because all it does is make you look ignorant. It looks like you don't know your product. And that's where we're getting to this final thing. You don't know your product. You don't know what the market is doing. You're not putting in the work that these reseller people are doing because they know the value of these things. But value value that's that's the word to get thrown around in here well this sold for this this is going for this how did we get to such a, a thing with this where we have this perceived value of something obviously nothing is worth anything unless somebody pays for it but there's an artificial inflation that also happens with this that comes from wada and heritage auctions and all these other video game grading places let's keep this 100 percent clear wada you can kiss my ass. You can lick my dirty feet clean because you are the biggest pieces of shit in this whole thing. The biggest pieces of shit, the worst people. I don't care if, if some YouTube channel buys, you know, a Nintendo Switch for a dollar and then sells it for $300. Whatever, that's fine. That's just based on market value. But WADA, WADA, for, for some reason, for some reason, they have become the, the standard for, for video game grading, for, for new video games, even used video games, even open video games, they'll grade your open cart, they'll grade your grandmother's urn and the ashes within the urn because they're experts. They're experts on sealed stuff. I'm sorry, how the fuck did you become an expert on anything? On anything? Did you go to school for this? Did you go to college for this? Because last time I checked, what? Huh? You've graded several things that have been reseals and fake prototypes and give it a, a 9.6 oh wait this is a 9.2 how do you decide what are your methods what are your methods to manage? oh oh i don't know maybe you're just trying to get your name out there by, by grading things and then things sell for really stupid high like a million dollars for a mario for a mario game and then you get your name all out in the press so then people are like wait a minute maybe my sealed copy which isn't sealed but you know maybe my my copy of garfield caught in the act for the Sega Genesis, phenomenal game, by the way, play this game. Uh, maybe this is worth a million dollars. Let me send this to WADA because you know what? WADA is charging you to send it to them. They're charging you for their time to grade this product and then give you an arbitrary grade. And then you have to decide what this is worth based on potential market value. Does, Does none of this seem insane to you? Does none of this seem bizarre to you? At the end of the day, it's about playing old video games. If you want to make a business out of it, that's fine. You know, this is America. You can make a business out of things like this. I'm not going to hate on you for that. 
okay? You have resellers, you have flippers. I'm not hating on you, okay? Do what you gotta do. I just think it's funny how the mindset of the retro game community has changed over the years because now everyone is accepting of this. But but do your thing. You wanna open up a convention. You wanna open up a video game store. Good, congratulations. You're an entrepreneur. You've done well. Same thing with these reseller channels. You're an entrepreneur. Having your own YouTube channel is a business like you people think that it's just making videos and talking about stuff but there's a lot of back-end stuff that goes into this including taxes including making your videos get seen including you know just just tons of stuff you started your own business you did well but like let's be real the hobby of collecting video games in 2022 is stupid it, it's just become stupid it, it's become so elitist it's become to the point of where it's like the price of entry it's not even really worth it anymore because you got to pay so much just to play your old game you know what get an emulator get you can get an emulator on your phone okay get get it get a, a retro you know system that has a bunch of video games built into it yeah it might be there might be one frame per second off on the audio or something like that but nine times out of ten you're not even gonna notice that thing okay let's just bring it back to like video games and not oh this this water graded product i've got to get this i've got to get this graded i have to give this stupid ass company money to grade my product so then i can try to sell it for like three it, it, it's, it's insane because like you have a sealed copy of a game that's not graded that sells for a couple hundred dollars and then you have a sealed copy of a game that sells for a couple thousand dollars why who has decided because it has a big piece of plastic over it has a little case on it has some water 9.2 grade on it who gives a shit who what is the point i don't get it i don't get it i i don't get it and that's why i'm happy with my collection i'll buy things from time to time if i see a good i got a good deal on those games it was a store tour and the guy was just walking around this store he had prices on them i said hey I'll give you this price for those two games. And he said, hey, that's not a bad deal. We'll do business. Like, oh, man. It's a shame because it's a it's a really fun hobby, you know, but there's just things that are kind of polluting it. And, um, yeah, so retro game collecting 2022. Stupid. So I don't do it anymore. I'm not going out there. I'm not beating the heat for some fat ass at a flea market to take out his cell phone. All right, let's sell it for $50. Let's sell it to you for $45. Go piss off. I don't, really, I don't really know what the point of this video was. I had a lot of anger inside of me about this, and I just wanted to get it out. So, yeah, let me know what you think about it in the comments section down below. I love all my resellers. I love all my flippers. Like I said, I'm friends with some of these people. The channels that have come up from that. Do your thing, man. Make your money. You know, get your stuff. But the hobby the, the collecting the, the retro gaming community it, it's all bullshit it's all bullshit later